Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first ever episode of What the Throne, our Game of Thrones podcast. My name is Dennis Zen. I'm here with Ashley V. Robinson. How are you doing? So good. How are you? Now, Game of Thrones is something, you know, the world loves. Mm -hmm. We love it. Uh, but let's kind of give a little backstory on our experience, not experiences, I guess, familiarity mm -hmm. with, with Game of Thrones. So Game of Thrones, I have not read the books. Um, I've only Someone is ringing their shame bell yes. at you right now. <laughs> I, I have only watched this TV series, but I've actually watched it many, many times. Uh, I'm actually... I think on my fifth watch of season one or two wow. or something like that. I, I, I watch the TV series a lot. I am actually waiting because uh, I, I actually got the first book and I started reading it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to hold off on this because I don't want to get spoiled. And, and right now we're kind of past that point, but it's like kind of too late. So I'm just I, I've downloaded like all the audiobooks and I'm waiting to the end of the series. Mm -hmm to then go listen to the books, which is a lot of, a lot of time. I've heard the audiobooks are really great, but I've never listened to them myself. Yeah. So, so what about you? I know you are a super book reader. Did you read the books before the TV show came out? I didn't read them before the TV show came out, but I read them before I saw the show. Oh, okay. So I had heard of A Song of Ice and Fire because I'm a huge fantasy nerd. Mm -hmm. Like, Lord of the Rings is my favorite thing ever. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first poster. It was the poster of Sean Bean on the Iron Throne. And I was like, what is this? Boromir knockoff nonsense. Like, <laughs> I didn't want anything to do with it. I thought it was dumb. Um, and then it was so popular. And I'm the person where I'm like, I want to read the book first. So I okay. read the first two books. And then I watched season one and two, and I caught up in real time when season three came out. Okay. And I am rereading um, the books again right now in preparation for this podcast and the final season. Yeah. And it's funny because I'm uh, most of the way through the third book, and there's already little things in there that I'm like, oh, this could be, this could pay off, or this could be. There's like, there's a lot of prophecies and stuff that mm -hmm. we haven't seen for a long time in the show that are referenced in the books that I'm interested to talk about. Yeah, so for people who don't know, you know, this is going to be our weekly Collider's weekly Game of Thrones podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're starting off leading up to the final season of season of Game of Thrones, which is season eight. And then, you know, they're working on that, the prequel series. So we're going to go on and we're going to talk about, you know, obviously we're going to still have our reviews mm -hmm. on, on our Collider uh, YouTube channel and whatnot. But this is going to be more where we're going to do a lot more speculation, a lot more deep diving. You're going to have the, the book uh, background and insight into that. And then I've watched the show many, many times. <laughs> and we're going to speculate about a lot of different things. Today's episode, we're going to talk about who's going to sit on top of the Iron Throne by yeah. the end of the season slash series. And we're going to go into, you know, who... You know who would be good, who deserves it, who we think will. We'll think talk about people in the past of uh, that have passed on that mm -hmm. maybe would have been good, and who would have been terrible on there. But every every week we'll talk about a certain topic. Obviously, when the the, uh, the final season is going on, we'll talk about topics that are related to you know what happens in the last episode. But uh, in general, we're just talking about more general things of like, you know, certain speculation or theories or uh, characters and certain actions or scenes that happen that our particular take on that. Yeah. So, so we'll, let's start off with, uh, you know, the, the general question. Who do you think is going to sit on top of the Iron Throne at the end of this season? Uh, who, who do you think will and who do you think deserves to? So when we were prepping for this podcast, we kind of bandied about a couple different discussions. And yeah. I thought this was the greatest one to start with because it's the ultimate question, right? Yes. Like, who's going to win, in the words of Peter Baelish, the Game of Thrones? And I I think people really want it to be Danny mm -hmm. because we've seen that journey for so long. Mm -hmm. um, but something that I've noticed recently um, is that George R. R. Martin and the Game of Thrones universe really punishes people for being arrogant and for believing in themselves too much. And Danny is literally the queen of that. I think the person who's going to wind up on top of the throne is Tyrion. Okay. Uh, because Tyrion is the character who's been the most 
brutalized, the most beat down consistently. Mm -hmm. And Tyrion consistently never overreaches. He makes bold moves, like he's a master chess player, but he never reaches beyond his capabilities, beyond what's deserved to him. And he never hurts anyone who doesn't deserve it. And we haven't seen him get any reward for it. So I think it would be very poetic if he got the ultimate reward. And if we have all of the maybe mm, more beautiful, sexy, young, 20 central casting types <laughs> die in his wake, then it tells you a lot about how the balances in this universe work. So I think it's going to be Tyrion. Okay. I, I have a different thought on that. I have... I have either Daenerys or Jon Snow just because of the arc mm -hmm. of the characters, you know, with Jon Snow. I mean, from the very beginning, there's all this mystery shrouded about his past and mm -hmm. who his mother was. And then, you know, through little hints throughout the series until the final, final episode of last season, mm -hmm. do we find out for sure? I mean, because everyone kind of... You know, we'd all uh, come around to it, I think. Yeah, <laughs> that he is uh, a target, well, half Targaryen, yeah, half Stark, uh, son of Lyanna. Um, and then his name is actually Aegon. And mm -hmm. I don't know which which number Aegon is he the third, fourth, He's fifth, the six. sixth? Okay, there the have sixth. been up to his point, there had been five Aegons, yeah. So, um, so to me, it's like either one of those two. I mean, do you think there's a chance that they'll? sit on top of the throne together or do you think no. it's one or the other no no okay. because i think whoever sits on the throne the other one's gonna die yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, this is this is game of thrones right yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, they're not giving you that totally if they're gonna give you a semi-happy ending okay sure mm -hmm. but they're not giving you that like they're gonna live together and they're married and they're gonna have kids and yeah, yeah, yeah. everything's great and fine and um, I mean, so, let's circle back to them having kids at some point. Okay. okay? I have a thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my thinking is one of those two, but the other, there's going to be some sort of sacrifice happening mm -hmm. uh, on one of their parts for probably one of each other. And then the other one will sit on the top of them. Tyrion, I, he's actually, when we, when we talk about deserves, I think Tyrion deserves fair. Yeah, yeah. to be on the Iron <laughs> Throne. I don't think he will be just uh -huh. because his character gets so, you know, I mean, a big point of, uh, of Game of Thrones is they always show these characters that are outcasts mm -hmm. from society that are looked down upon. You're talking about bastards. You're talking about uh, dwarves. You're talking about cripples. You're talking, you know. Well, all, women for that women, matter. Yeah. Women as well. And just people who are who are looked down upon, and I just don't know if this the the world that they're living in mm -hmm. is willing to accept uh, Tyrion as the their overall uh, ruler. That's interesting because I feel that same way about John. Okay, um, because John. The best leaders are the people who never want to be leaders. I'm assuming we're going to talk about Ned Stark at some point. Yes. Um, and we can we can put a pin in that discussion until then. But like Ned Stark would have been the best king. And John, even though he's not Ned's biological child, is the most Ned-like oh, yeah. of any character. He's very fair. He's very honest. Mm -hmm. um, he does what needs to be done. He's selfless. Like he... In my opinion, more than Daenerys has the trappings of what a great leader is, mm -hmm. but because he is baseborn, even though, yes, we know Rob signed the document, he's now John Stark, technically. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't remember who else knows that. Um, but he, so he's baseborn, and also Starks never get rewarded. Like all of the Starks are so hard done by. Um, so I just I don't know if John just as like a rule of thumb is going to be allowed to get that close to the throne. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a possibility. I mean, let's let's talk about some of the players here. You know, there's we have Cersei Lannister who you know is on the throne right mm -hmm. now as the queen. Um, I don't think she's making making it out. I th I honestly I remember doing predictions and doing the series uh, uh, reviews for last season, and I had predicted that she was going to die in the season finale of mm -hmm. season seven. So her living past that <laughs> has surprised me. I thought she was a I thought she was a goner. Obviously, she survived. So I'm still banking on her 
uh, demise this mm-hmm. season, and, and I'm predicting that it's going to be Jamie Lannister that I, does her in. I think it would be very poetic um, t- if they kind of killed each other because they came into the world together, oh. so they should go out of the world okay. together. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that looks like, but I definitely think that they're. I think they're going down. Yeah. Um, I hope not too early because even though Cersei is such a despicable character, she's so wonderful and like so entertaining and so good for the show. Yeah. So I could also see because Cersei has survived so much as well. Mm -hmm. I could see her being maybe like one of the last ones that they have to overcome to be able to ascend to the Iron Throne, Mm -hmm. whoever that looks like. But you're what what percentage chance are you giving her to actually make it or stay on the throne? I guess oh zero flat zero no way. (laughs) What about uh, just surviving? The series. No, zero. Okay. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I mean, she's... we did in Joff, so Cersei's not that much more noble. <laughs> um, and then we already talked about Daenerys and Tyrion and Jon Snow. Jamie Lannister, there's no real chance of him getting to... Th- he has no desire. No, he doesn't. All he wants to do yeah. is do good by Cersei, and Cersei kind of hates him right now. They have no children left. Yeah. You know, like, what does Jamie have to live for? Yeah, well, I mean, she pretended... That she's pregnant. Yeah. Uh, we're not quite sure. I think there. it's a power play. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think she's pregnant. I think she did that one to try and manipulate Jamie and also manipulate Tyrion mm-hmm. when they had that conversation. Um, yeah, he doesn't seem. He never wanted to basically play this Game of Thrones. He just wanted to. He loved Cersei, it, it, even despite how. You know, <laughs> we'll just put incest aside. For yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that that was his thing, and then he, and, and yeah. he was in a better position than anyone else to have taken it because he killed um, uh, uh, Aerys. A- Aerys. Aerys. I was yeah. like, there's too many Aerys and Aegons, yes. and they all sound the same. Uh, you know, like he he sat on the Iron Throne, and Ned Stark walked in and saw him. So if Jamie had wanted to be king, he would have been king instead of Robert. Yeah, and then uh, that's why I think he's going to kill Cersei, and maybe what will happen. What you said where they double kill mm-hmm. each other uh, is that you know he was the Kingslayer, so now he will be the Queen Slayer. Oh, yeah. so, oh, well done, Dennis. Yeah. So <laughs> he 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 won't he won't be on no. that throne. Uh, you know, and we have other characters like Sansa Stark and Arya Stark. Arya doesn't really have any. I would the fan in me would, would, would love, love to okay. see Arya absolutely, but I don't think she has a desire to. Though. I don't think so, and I don't think she'd be good at it. No, um, but I think it, like Sansa of the Stark sisters is the one who's more who's in a better position for it. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure though. I'm not sure if she wants anymore because we we met her. She really wanted to be the princess. She mm-hmm. wanted to marry Joffrey. She wanted to grow up and be a queen and and all that. And and she's gone through a lot of hardships and she's really matured into a very interesting character. Yes. Um. And if they do something with her, like there's a there's a Westerosi historical figure named Good Queen Alison, mm-hmm. and she like uh, gave a lot of money to the Night's Watch, and she was known for like what a, a beautiful soul she was. And mm-hmm. I could see Sansa becoming a figure like that. Like I think Sansa will survive, okay, but I don't think she will be a royal figurehead anymore. I think she will survive, but she will be the basically the Lady of Winterfell. Mm-hmm. There won't be. She's, you think she's just going to turn into Catelyn? <laughs> I think so. Uh, I don't know if she'll be married, though. Uh, I mean, I mean, you still have Bran, but Bran's a three-eyed raven. Uh, I think ra- Bran's going to either bite it or he's going to be stuck in that tree for the rest yeah, of his life. Yeah, I think he's going to going going away. And then, you know, Rickon's gone. Jon Snow. They did him so dirty, <laughs> little baby <laughs> yeah. Rickon. I felt so bad for that character. I loved him so much. The actor was so, like, precious and, like, so pure. And then Ramsey Bolton happened. Yeah. Well, not only that. I mean, he really didn't have that much screen time in the he, series. He didn't because I think in the in the books he's, like, three when we first meet him. Okay. So by the time you get to Battle of Bastards, he's, like, maybe six. Like, he's, you know, he's just not oh, old enough to, like, okay. have done anything. The actor, I think, was a little older than that. But yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's why. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Sansa, yeah, I don't think we'll be on the throne, but I think she will be in some sort of position of power in Winterfell. Do you think Arya makes it out? I think so. I think so, but I think she'll fade away into, you know, being a faceless man or yeah. woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. faceless person, person of it, yeah. non-gender yeah. <laughs> words. Like, like, and, and that's going to be her thing. You I know? would love it if she became 
kind of like very like not a spy master, but that person who works in the shadows. Mm -hmm. I think that would be really cool for her. Yeah. But I'll be sad if she dies. I'll be really sad. Now, now one character that, that's still around and, and resurfaced last season that I thought right now I'm not thinking so much, but I remember back in season was it season one and two mm -hmm. that I thought maybe he would. But they haven't focused on him enough, so I, I don't think so. Gendry. I love him so much because I love Chris from Skins. <laughs> so I had thought like, hey, in, in, in season one and two, especially on, in two when he's on the road with Arya, I was mm -hmm. like, okay, he's going to become king because he'll be the rightful heir. And then he'll, you know, marry Arya or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there was a minute where I really, really wanted that <laughs> to happen. He's a composite of, like, a couple book characters in the books. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one of Robert's bastards named Edric Storm, who he kind of, like, absorbs the storyline of, the way Sansa gets, like, part of Jane Poole's storyline. I, I hope he makes it out. I think it's really interesting that he's kind of working with Jon now mm -hmm. because it's the inversion of the relationship of, both of their father yes. figures, I yes. guess. Like Ned served Robert and now Gendry is serving John. Um, but I think there's a good chance that he bites it mm -hmm. um, as a push for Arya because they are so close or they were that close mm -hmm. at one time. Or maybe he'll see Arya and who she is now and be like, I don't even know who you are. Um, but I, I hope they get reconciled. And he's he's a character with a lot of potential, right? Because like you said, like he has resurfaced, but we haven't seen a ton of him. Mm -hmm. So like there's the most blank slate there to mm -hmm. do something really crazy with. Yeah. Uh, Gendry is, yeah. Oh, you said he's a composite of a bunch of different characters mm -hmm. from the book. Uh, let me ask you th this question. So as we watch the TV series, as a TV series fan, there's already a ton of characters. Oh, yeah. In, like through season one to all the way now. Okay, just in season one, there's a ton of characters, but think about all the characters that have died mm -hmm. and then new characters being introduced like constantly, the turnover rate. I mean, that's what's the brilliance of this show is you have uh, amazing characters that everyone loves or maybe everyone hates, but they're still well-drawn characters mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they die and then they don't necessarily get replaced, but you have other characters come into the mix and it's just so seamless in, in terms of like, the the quality of the characters. So that's already a ton in the TV series. How many are there in the book? I mean, there must be thousands. There's, I've never checked this myself, but I was told when I started reading Game of Thrones that you meet a new character in every chapter, even if it's like a page boy or uh -huh. a serving wench. And that might be true. And then sometimes characters will pop up like way later and mm. you don't remember who they are or why. Like at least on the show, if you don't remember their names, you can just, you know what they look like. Yes. Uh, which is a lot easier than, and, and Game of Thrones has like not quite typical spelling. So, you know, it's like Catelyn and Eddard instead of like Catherine and yeah. Nathan or Edward or something like that. So like yeah. trying to parse that is really, really difficult. But especially when you get into the sort of the middle chunks, like from Storm of Swords onwards, there are a lot of composite supporting characters that get absorbed, their storylines get absorbed for the sake of streamlining the television show. And I think they did that because that was when they were trying to, we thought that the next book was coming out imminently. And then we kind of spent those middle seasons like spinning the wheels a little mm -hmm. bit to see if they were going to finish before they moved. So I think in the show, like maybe we could have had some of more of those unique characters, but I think streamlining it made it a little more easy to digest. Because if you had two of Robert's bastards instead of one, yes. kind of doing the same thing, kind of looking the same in two different storylines, it doesn't make a ton of sense. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a lot harder. It's already hard for, like, I watched, you know, like I told you, I've, I've watched this series many times. I mean, especially the first couple because it was much easier to rewatch them before the upcoming mm -hmm. season. Now it's like. And they're so, like, season one and two are, like, perfect. Yeah. But, but. When we're talking about uh, characters, like I remember, you know, I knew I know who uh, Quiburn is. Mm -hmm. Rewatching the previous seasons, I was like, oh, they found him at I forget, was it a Heron Hall? I can't remember. Yes, was, yeah. They found him there, and he was like dying, and then they they brought him to King's Land. Like, like I totally didn't, you know, because when you get into all these new characters, you don't really. 
you don't really know them or get comfortable with them until later when they're yes. actually doing stuff. And then it's like, oh, he was found there. And, mm-hmm. Or, or, or they're just, seated earlier or you hear about them. Like we hear about, um, they call her Yara in the TV show, which yes. bothers me so much. That's not her name in the books. Uh, it's Asha. But you hear about uh, Theon's yeah. sister. You hear about her for ages and ages and ages before you finally see her. And then when we see her for the first time where she's riding with T- uh, Theon and it gets mm-hmm. really uncomfortable, you don't even know that that's her initially until like two or three scenes deep. So yeah. it's interesting how they see them. They're smarter than we are. Yeah. Or, or just, yeah, you mentioned just mentioning characters. Mm-hmm. Uh you know, as season seven, uh, I, I forgot, it's towards the end when Thor's of Mir is, is is with the whole, what I call, like, I, I forgot how many, the, the, it's like their Magnificent Seven or whatever, like oh, a yes, Western yeah, yeah, where yeah. they go off <laughs> they on the wall. And, and you know, and they're talking about him. And I forgot what the battle was. The one where he, did, he pulls out his flaming sword. Uh, uh, it's basically like a famous battle. Yeah. I literally just read about it. I'm so mad that I can't remember yeah. the name. But if you watch season one, you'll see that Jory talks to Jamie Lannister about Thor's mm-hmm. me. Like at that time, I'm like, who the hell is he talking? I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. He's like, he, they're just sharing a story here. Yeah, right? and Don Darian is the same thing because yeah. like we meet him several times, and then like now he's kind of going off with John, and yeah. uh, you hear a lot about them. And Melisandre is the same way too. Like we hear about her, and we hear about Stannis for a really long time mm-hmm. before we see them, and they become an important part of the plot. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's just, I don't know. It's so complicated, but it's not. It's not so convoluted where it's like oh they're just making a mess of it it's actually it all fits together it's intentional and and it's also one of those things where well if you didn't notice that you're not losing out on anything it's just Mm -hmm. more of a it's not even an easter egg because it's not supposed to be hidden it's there in plain sight yeah yeah but But it's kind of like how you want to figure out the twist five seconds before the characters in your story figure it out like it's so well plotted and the fact that you can go back and rewatch it five times and still be like, oh, yeah. holy crap, yeah. they just mentioned Quiburn for the first yeah. time. And, like, and that that matters to you, yes. that speaks to the quality of the show. Yes. And, and also the, th- the, the thing that they do, and ob- obviously this is because it's based on a book that, that George R. R. Martin had written before, but uh, co- a lot of complaints of TV shows are they did not plot this out. Uh, yes. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, you just watch certain shows, and you're like, they they didn't know what the hell. Too vague name names. <laughs> yeah, huh? I said too vague name names. Oh, I'm just I, kidding. I'm just. No, kidding. there's a time. Uh, Walking Dead is one of them. Yeah. Right. They they, they just want to stretch out the show. Mm-hmm. It, in Walking Dead, I, I was a fan of the show, and I, I liked the characters, but you could tell they're like, well, this is a very successful show, so we just need to stretch these storylines and these characters out because they weren't comfortable with like okay let's just kill off this character and we'll bring a new one like because they were worried like well game Game of thrones was like a huge paradigm shift when we killed ned stark at the end of the first season because it's like this is i know we joke that like sean bean dies and everything and it's not good if sean bean doesn't die but like he's a huge like He's the biggest star power in that show. Like, he is a movie star yeah. who's part of these huge genre films. He was in James Bond. He was in mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings. Like, on and on and on and on. And then we kill him. And not only that, this isn't The Flash. He doesn't come back 15 no. minutes later. Like, he's dead forever. And Game of Thrones was the cultural sensation that has made us okay with accepting that. Because they just murder people all yes. over the place. Even though not a ton of shows are picking up on that and not a ton of other genre shows. You know, like none of the CW shows, like people die. Yeah. And unless they went off to be a movie star, they'll be back in the next yeah. episode. But I think the reason why is is they can't because mm-hmm. they don't have the characters to come in and fulfill. Because like with Sean Bean, you're right. Like not only that, he was on every poster. Every poster yeah. is the Iron Throne with Ned Stark there with <laughs> yeah, the sword, yeah. <laughs> right? And you're like, he's the star of the show. It's all about him. It's all about his family. And he's the the main hero. And then they kill him off. And then, you know, you know how many people swore off the show at yeah. that point? I heard so many people. I didn't, but I heard so many people. That's it. Not watching the show. Blah, blah, blah. Guess what? They started watching when season two started. Everyone everyone swears they're going to quit every yeah. season. Yeah, because like something happened that they didn't like, and mm-hmm. then they always come back and watch it. And so 
Uh, yeah, uh, I just think yeah, Game of Thrones is one of those shows that because the the, the writing and the characters are so good, you can do that. You can, mm-hmm. you and know. the casting is really good too. Yeah. Like, okay, so like Ned Stark is dead now, so now we get to have Jamie Lannister and like Nicola Kosterwaller is amazing, and we get to have um, we get to have Rob step up, and we get to see more of Daenerys doing anything except kissing boys. <laughs> like <laughs> everyone in the show is, re- there's really no weak link. Like you can, we can all debate, and I can debate about whether someone is like exactly the way they were mm-hmm. repped in the book or not. But it's a solid cast. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I have one exception to that, but I think uh, everyone has one. But I think maybe, generally speaking, yeah. it's a yeah. very well cast show. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about uh, who in the past. Speaking of dead characters. Let's do it. <laughs> who, what characters in the past, what do you think they would have looked like on the Iron Throne? And who would have done a good job and who would have done a horrible job? Because, okay, let's start with Ned Stark. He's a, the big one. Yeah. You contend that that he would have been a good king, right? I, I think so because, um, you know, and it's it's a tough it's a tough line. Uh-huh. It's kind of how I feel about all all leaders, kings, presidents, prime ministers, whatever. There has to be a certain amount um, that you are willing to humble yourself and not do things in your own best interest, but to get to a position of that powerful, you obviously have to be very ambitious mm-hmm. and uh, have a lot of confidence uh, and arrogance. And I think because Ned is so he's pure to a fault, it literally gets him killed. Yes. In my opinion, he could have been a great king for the people and made a lot of really good decisions for the communities that he was serving, I don't think he would have been liked. And I think he would have gone to an early grave (laughs) under the stress of it all. But I think he would have been, he's the type of man that I would have liked to see in charge. Okay, so I have a different opinion. I think- How uh, dare you, this is the internet. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Um, I think Ned Stark, I mean, all the things you said are true about Ned Stark, Mm -hmm. but I think because he was so pure, so honorable, and because of the world of Westeros, he would have gotten eaten alive. Like he would have, mm-hmm. he would have been killed, murdered, framed, uh, anything. Either way, <laughs> like he would have been out. Mm-hmm. I mean, look what happened when when he was handed the king. I think he would have been politically outmaneuvered. He just wasn't because of his disposition, his personality. He just wasn't capable, and that's kind of why mm-hmm. I think Jon Snow, even if he have, he does sit on, on the Iron Throne at the very end, unless he has someone, let's say, like Tyrion being yeah. in his hand and guiding him, I I, I could see I could see uh him uh getting, you know, uh his ass kicked in the political realm yes. versus versus and the other thing is like, well, Robert really wasn't that political either, but he was feared. Yeah, he was fe- like he's even- very Machiavellian in that way. Like he's feared and loved by the people that he needs to respectively. Yeah, and Robert's like it's it's so funny watching. Robert is actually one of my favorite characters, mm-hmm. and it's funny watching season one. Like even how vulnerable he is. Like when he's like he's gotten a lot fatter. Uh, he you know he, he's not the warrior <laughs> that he used to be. Yeah. He gets hurt by the boar. Mm-hmm. Everybody is still afraid. Until he actually dies. dies, Yeah, no one will dare do any. Like what Cersei does to Ned Stark, she would never mm-hmm. do to 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 Robert. That's so interesting because I think of Robert Baratheon as being very much like Boromir, who Sean Bean played yeah. in, in Lord of the Rings. Like, they're these two men that at their best are the best men. Like, they're honorable, mm-hmm. they're brave, they're powerful, they're magnanimous. And then at their worst, they're like the most corrupted version of like man mm-hmm. as a literary figure. Um, I mean, obviously, he was like a seven out of ten king. Like yeah. things were pretty okay. Yeah. He just spent on too much money. Yeah, spent and, too much and money s- and spent too much of his seed. Yes, Jud- especially judging by the books, because you meet Robert's bastards all over the place. Yeah. They're just like littered across the Seven Kingdoms. But at least he was smart enough to realize that he wasn't a good ruler, mm-hmm. and so he had John Aaron there. To do basically run the king, and the that's man, why the man who really starts this whole drama, oh, yeah. John, the death of John. Aaron. Do you think John Aaron would have been a good king? 
Uh, I don't know too much about him mm-hmm. based on the TV series. It just sounds like he was a mentor to both Robert and Ned. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when Robert comes down to Winterfell to get Ned for Hand of the King, he tells him, he's like, look, I, I'm getting you so that I don't have to run the kingdom. Yeah. You do it, and I'll go do what I keep doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, all right. Uh, an- another person that I think actually would have been a, a-, a good king, but and, and I, that's why I knew he was going to die, was uh, uh, Renly Baratheon. You think Renly would have been a good king? Yeah, I think he was. Convince uh, me. <laughs> I mean, he was well loved by the people. Yeah. He understood what people wanted. He was. He understood appearances mm-hmm. were, were mm-hmm. very important. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it, you know, maybe he would have been a little more corrupted with Marjorie yeah. at his side. But Marjorie, she seemed also in touch with that kind of appearance thing, right? We we see mm-hmm. later with Joffrey. Like, look, it's not like Marjorie was a good person, but at the same time, she wasn't really, she wasn't a cruel person. Yeah, right? I don't think she, she was, was evil. No, she was very ambitious. She mm-hmm. wanted to be queen. Mm-hmm. That's all she wanted to do. She knew she could manipulate people. Mm-hmm. She knew she could manipulate Joffrey. So I think those two together, I think they would have done done all right. And especially, you know, that part where, because at that, at, that, at that point, right before he dies, he has the biggest army. Yes, He's makes, yes. He makes a pact with Rob Stark mm-hmm. to say, you fight, you can have the North, and uh, and I'll be king. And that's like guaranteed victory. That's right a there. cool alternate universe I would have liked to see uh-huh. with like uh, sort of the, 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 tri, the triumvirate of like Renly, Marjorie, and Loris <laughs> in the South. And then like Rob up in the North being all sad with his dire wolf. That would have been really interesting. <laughs> um, so what do you think of Renly? I don't know. I don't really care for Renly. Okay. So um, I don't know if I think he would have been a good ki- – I don't – think Stannis would have been either because they're the different composite parts of Robert's personality, mm-hmm. right? Like Robert's like the best mesh of the both of them. But you bringing up the fact that like he was loved and he raised this huge army, that's not for nothing. Mm-hmm. So maybe he could have pulled it off. If he was smart enough to have advisors with him that yeah, could he help needed, him mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to help him with stuff. Because like uh, Brienne served him as well. And I love Brienne and I think she's a great character, but... Um, Especially at that time when she was a part of his Kingsguard, the Rainbow Guard, um, she was not like wise in the ways of the world. Like mm-hmm. Brienne did a lot of growing and a lot of learning on her time with Jamie. Yes. And maybe she was too green. And maybe those were the kind of people that he surrounded himself with. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Interesting poll, though. I, I forgot about Renly. Yeah. And then, you know, and then to your point, I mean, Catelyn, when she comes to visit mm-hmm. him in camp, is like, you guys look like you're playing at war. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. You, what'd she say? You guys are the Knights of Summer. Yes. You know, and winter is and coming. And winter is coming, baby. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about Stannis. Yeah. He, Stannis, I think he would have kept the peace in terms of fighting. Mm hmm. But as far as, like, internal stuff and politics and dealing with the people, I think he's the type of person to be like, well, sorry, you guys don't get any food, you know? like, (laughs) Yeah, but, like, what did you want from me? Like, I grew the food, the food rotted. It's not my fault. You should take better care of it. Yeah. Stannis is interesting to me because book Stannis and TV Stannis are very different. Okay. What's the the difference? Book Stannis is, like, very physically imposing. He's very strong. Um, He's very hard. And he falls for Melisandre because um, she bolsters that confidence and hard-headedness that he has. Like, he's very much like a Baratheon, um, like, from his homeland. Like, they are from Iraqi country. Mm -hmm. Uh, They live by the sea. Like, he's very bolstered by all of those elements. And in the show, I really like the actor who plays him. And Mm -hmm. I I like the choices that he made. But he's much... He's a, they play him much more as an intellectual, and he really needs Melisandre to be the driving ambition behind him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think book Stannis could have been a good king. I don't think TV Stannis could have been a good king. Mm. Um, but I was sad to see him go. I think, what's the actor's name? I think Stephen Delane, is that his name? Yeah. I know he has a son as well that is an actor. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Yes. Uh, he's on, I, I think th- he's on Preacher right now. Stephen Delane? Yeah. Yeah, I think his son is on Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, Stephen Delane. Uh, yeah, I think his son is on Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah. Well, that's why you got that Walking Dead mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you all are welcome. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, Rob, Rob Stark. How, how would have Rob Stark done as, as 
king. I think Rob might have fared about as well as his dad did. Mm -hmm. um, again, they're very similar. And as we see Rob grow and sort of mature into being a man, because in I don't know how old um, the actor was, but in the book he's 15 when okay. he becomes King of the North. Like, <laughs> okay. They're young. Yeah. They're so young. Um, I think John is like 16 when he goes to the wall. Like they're super, they're like little baby boys yeah. played by 26-year-old actors. Yes. Um, uh, it's right, like and, Beverly Hills 90210. It's like every <laughs> every show at Riverdale. I yeah. think one of the Josie and the Pussycats is like thirty or thirty two. <laughs> like good for her. Um, but the the elder the elder Stark boys don't seem to fare too well. Mm -hmm. And Rob was evolving into I think a really interesting leader, but he still had those like dregs of being a little boy in him. Like he mm -hmm. like you to your point didn't really understand the politics of it. Like he goes off and marries yeah. Jane Westerling because he slept with her and, and felt bad and again that's what was her name in the show they did they, they called her something else right yeah i forgot that not name. jane because there yeah. are so many janes yeah um but you but you were saying um yeah, so he, so like he he is corruptible in that way because he follows that like young foolish impulse but then follows it up in the most noble way possible mm -hmm. and then ultimately gets himself killed like he doesn't make the best decisions but he was patient and he did surround himself by with good people. And I think there was a real, like, I was really mad when he died. I threw the book across the room the first <laughs> time I read it. Um, and people like to be kind of shitty about Rob Stark because they'll say, um, well, he wasn't a POV character, so he doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And I think, that's a, I think that's a poor point of view to take um, because I think Rob was a really important, impactful character. And I think... Honestly, I think Richard Madden, because he's so good, just like elevated that character. Mm -hmm. So I think I think he could have taken I don't think he could have taken the Iron Throne. Mm -hmm. But I think to your point earlier, if he teamed up with Renly, I think he would have made a great warden of the north. Mm -hmm. And maybe he could have survived that. <laughs> yeah. And also, it would be I think he'd make a, it's it's weird to say, but he would have made a better ruler post Ned's death. Yes. Yes. Because mm -hmm. he learn the life like oh being honorable is not going to always get you <laughs> where you need to where go you, yeah 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 and uh yeah i i, I do feel the same way though like he he, he was much like his father and in, in, in being you know down south with all the politics and not for him not no. for him uh talissa talisa 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 or talisa there you go uh it's his wife's name in the in the show played by charlie chaplin's granddaughter oh really yep Didn't or gr know. maybe great granddaughter okay. she was also know. in sherlock she was john watson's girlfriend yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um tywin lannister Ugh. as king Ugh. how um, how would he have done he would have done poorly okay um he would have been he would have been a lot like robert except without any of the love. Like, I think he could have done the nuts and bolts of it. I think mm -hmm. he could have gotten himself into that position. But Tywin Lannister is kind of like, and I'm loath to make this comparison because the actor is so bad, um, but he's kind of like Frank in House of Cards. He mm -hmm. is a character who, I don't care what they did in later seasons, wanted to be the Wizard of Oz, the man behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. So the best position for those two characters to be in is that supporting role mm -hmm. where you the the leader thinks that you have their best interests in mind, but you're just private enough that you can work your own. Like he's at his best when he's the hand of the king. Mm -hmm. Um, but did he deserve to die? And do I hope that? Am I glad that he never got to be king? Absolutely, <laughs> he was a monster. It was so satisfying that he died on the toilet. <laughs> so I have a different take than you. I don't think he would have been a good king, mm -hmm. but I think he would have been better than than how you think I think just because I think there's parts of him that were very logical and uh, reasonable like mm -hmm. I remember when he comes to Heron Hall and he sees like his men like killing and torturing these people for no reason yeah 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 and he's like put these people to work like what are you doing you're wasting you know? resources yeah, yeah exactly so I think he's very practical in that way is he a good person no he's not a good person do you think he would have been liked no, he wouldn't have. He wouldn't have been liked, but he would have done certain. He at least understood part of parts, not all, because he wouldn't have been liked. But he would understand parts of ruling in, mm -hmm. in the sense of like, like he knew how stupid it was for Joffrey to to kill uh, Ned Stark. Yes, yeah, he would have just kept Ned in the dungeon forever. Yeah, because like 
now that if you think about it, it's like, okay, let's say that Ned confesses, even though he didn't really do it. He takes a black, he goes to the wall. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rob Stark accepts this and still becomes, he becomes the Warden of the North Mm -hmm. and is underneath, you know, even though he doesn't want to be under job, like a yeah. lot of a lot of things would have ended up differently had had that gone. It might have been a little throwback to like some of the previous kings too, because Tywin is more of you know uh, Ares's generation mm-hmm. than he is of sort of this new crop of characters that we meet at the beginning of mm-hmm. the book. But I, th- I think you're right. I think he could have definitely handled the duties of being king. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, he, he's not a good person. He would have done. So, I mean, he I know, have been liked. I know I keep bringing up the good person thing, yeah. but and, and that none of them are good people. <laughs> so it's sort of like an irony. But I guess I'm really harping on who's a good person. Yeah. And I don't know if any of them are. No, I mean, it, but the one thing, though, is I don't think he would have run the kingdom into the ground. No, you know I would I mean? agree with that for sure. Where like Joffrey was running the kingdom into the ground. He just couldn't mm-hmm. tell. He couldn't see that. Oh, you're creating so much chaos and, you know, tension amongst all the people. Like, he didn't understand that... that the optics? <laughs> yeah, he just thought, I'm king. And it's, you know, it's Cersei's fault. I mean, you hear the conversations that she talks to mm-hmm. him about. Uh, he like, was also, in the books, I think he's 13 when he dies. Okay. So, like, he's quite young. Mm-hmm. But I think part of that fault, too, lies with, and this isn't someone else who might be on your list, is Peter Baelish, because Peter Baelish was the master of coin for so long. Mm-hmm. So, like, he's the one who ultimately, like, he's the you know, Secretary of Treasury, like, he signs off on all these expenses. You know, mm-hmm. he can come back and say, no, he's the one collecting debts, and then that role moves to Tyrion. And if you don't have someone in that position to, like, prop up what the king is doing, mm-hmm. or if you have a king like Robert or Joffrey, mm-hmm. who are ironically not related, but the same in that way, like, willfully ignorant, um, I don't know I don't know how much there is to do with that. But yeah. I think I blame Peter Baelish for a lot of that as well. <laughs> Interesting. All right, I'll, I'll name four more people, and you just tell me your, cool. your thoughts. We got uh, Kyle Drogo. Imagine if he had lived. He had, let's say he had lived, and oh, he, man. him, and Daenerys crossed the narrow sea together uh-huh. with the armies and the dragons. And look, at that point, there is no Tyrion hand of the king. No, there is no like. No. It's a straight up like they're gonna pillage. That's like a season. Wow. That they're gonna pillage all of Westeros, and most likely. You know, king and queen take over the, thro- you know, Iron Throne, wait for their child to be born, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we're assuming that Dan, that, that baby survives. Yes. That's really interesting because I literally would have, I have ne- never entertained that thought yeah. ever. Um, I think if he um, worked closely with Danny, I think they could have been good. Okay. I think they could have, but I think on his own. Well, he, she, she mm-hmm. was already tempering some yeah. of his, you know. They both changed each other for good and for ill, yeah. but mostly for good. Yeah. Um, he could have got there. He'd have been a better leader of Wildly. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ober Martell. I was so hoping you would bring that uh, up. Um, I would have loved to see it. Um, yeah. I would love to see any of the Dorans of power. I think the Dornish culture is so fascinating. Um, Ober in a school because he's a lot like Jamie. He's like very charismatic, mm-hmm. very good. Um, I don't know if the Westerosi would be like keen on a Dornish leader, mm-hmm. but I would have loved to see it. And I think he could have pulled it off because people like him, yes. kind of like you were saying about Renly. I mean, he also, Oberyn Martell, is one of my favorite characters. And he's literally there for one season, just like Robert. Like well, one Pedro season. Pedro Pascal that like kills it. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but yeah, I would have liked to see it. I, he seemed to have an understanding of things. The only thing that he, you know, Fell into the trap of was overestimating his fighting ability and hubris will take yeah. you down every time in Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, the the he was doing the villain speech even though he wasn't the mm-hmm. villain. Uh, that was a death that su- that surprised me. Yeah, I surprised a lot of people. Uh, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> I love watching those like reactions. Uh, those little tape like bar reactions of people. Yes, yeah. And uh, that was one of them that people were just like went nuts because it looked like oh he won he's going to kill him and then in the way he dies as well it's uh, like just kidding they're zombies <laughs> where did you read up to the book to when the the tv show started to surpass it like, um it's different for a couple different storylines line? okay. but it's about season four or five okay is where things taper off uh-huh. um there are still some threads that are kind of um, Un- unresolved. seeping through, but uh, yeah, after season five, it's basically like a brave new world. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Mance Raider. 
<laughs> I heard he's still alive in the books. Is yeah. that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, not everyone dies who dies in the books. Yeah. Um, there's a couple characters that are like kind of zombies mm-hmm. that are like dead in the show, but like still alive. We saw that in the show with um, Ned Stark's older brother, very mm-hmm. briefly, Cold Hands. Um, God, he's so cool. He's such a cool character. Um, Benjen. Yeah, Benjen. Mm-hmm. Lady Stoneheart, if people know her from the book, like, I think she could come back in season eight, but we'll see. I really hope so. Um, I I kind of feel the same way that I feel about Cal Drogo. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he'd be good, but I think Westeros is in this like cultural rut, which is why we're sort of having these events take place where they need they need a new age, man. Like this is going to be the new age of heroes. Um, I'd like I'd like to see Mance Raider happen. Yeah, see, I don't have too much opinion on it because on the show he was. He's un- he's a broad character, and he's also underwritten. Yeah. Because when they cast Karen Hines, I was super excited because mm-hmm, I love him in mm-hmm. Rome, and he just doesn't you have don't love much. Love him in Justice League, Dennis. Uh, <laughs> do <laughs> do you actually see him in Justice League? Um, I wish they just painted him white yeah. and given him orange. I really do. <laughs> but but you don't really you see some of his character. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see that look. He's not actually someone who's a vicious yeah. leader. He's actually uniting. Uh, the wildings or the free folk, as they call themselves, together for a purpose, to mm-hmm. survive. And it didn't seem, you know, but we just didn't get enough of yeah. him. In the books, you get the, a real sense of his sort of like uh, Genghis Khan qualities mm. that like these people follow him because they respect him, because he expects a lot of them, because they push each other really hard and they believe in this ideal. Like uh, he's, he's a very like radical figure in the book. And it's mm. interesting to watch um John's POV chapters in like book three because he has so much respect for him, but also wants to murder him the whole time. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, you get a sense of he wants to take him out in the show, but it's it's more of a like, so I can end all of this or yes. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Marjorie Tyrell. What? Oh, she'd kill it. Like if, if she had taken over... Let's say, I don't know, she married Joffrey and... Or Tommen or whatever. Yeah, Tommen and Tommen dies and she's she's the queen instead of Cersei. I think she would have done well. I love Marjorie because I think she's a perfect blend of like Cersei and Catelyn because mm-hmm. like you were saying, um, I don't think she's a bad person. No. But I think she's got her eye on the prize and she's going to do anything to get there. Yeah. Um, but I think at her core... She does care, and she is trying to do her best, and that's why she makes such good TV. And, like, Natalie Dormer's an awesome actress. She's super fun to watch. She's basically doing a s- evil version of her Anne Boleyn from Tudors, and I'm here for it. Um, I was re- I was sad when she went. Yeah. Um, but I think I think even her and Loras, like, against the world could have taken it, which would have been an interesting um, sort of pseudo Cersei Jamie dynamic without the weird incest going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, she. I think she just – she understood – the, the different aspects of, of it. And anything that she didn't understand, I, I'm sure she would have gotten Lady Elena just would have told her what was yeah, going exactly. on. I, oh, man, she was so great. I have her on my list, Elena Tyrell. Like, she was also one of my favorite characters and mm-hmm. also not... She was longer. She was around longer than one season. A couple seasons. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she just... Every time she met wits with anyone, Tyrion, Tywin... Uh, Varys, like <laughs> yeah. she just she was either equal to or surpassed them, mm-hmm. and she was she was fantastic. I don't know if she would have made a great queen, but mm-hmm. she would have made a great again hand uh-huh. spy master supporting role. Um, I'm really into the idea now of like um, the uh, literary archetype of a crone, which is mm-hmm. like an older woman, mm-hmm. because old women know everything because they raised the world. And to me, like Olena Tyrell is the peak of that. Like she is what. If you want to survive in Westeros, she is what you should aspire to be—a poison master. Yeah. yeah, and she or she's the one who orchestrated the death of Joffrey Baratheon. And I mean, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we were all waiting for it. Unfortunately, you know, she put the place to blame uh, on somebody else. Yeah, but, but he made yeah, it out okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't be caught. You can't be caught, Dennis. You gotta no. shift the blame. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, it's not like she was like friends with with, with Tyrion or anything. Like right. That. Exactly. So, yeah, um, okay, uh, who would have been uh, some of the the worst? Uh... Viserys. Yeah, we have Viserys, <laughs> Ramsey Bolton, Peter Baelish, Balon Greyjoy, those any, four. Any Boltons, any Greyjoys, and I love Theon Greyjoy, uh-huh. and I'm sure we're going to talk about it at some point. Um, 
uh, that's so interesting. Bran, <laughs> uh, Ed, Edmure Tully mm-hmm. would have been terrible. Like there are, it's just like real life, right? Like there's so many people vying for these collections mm-hmm. of, of positions who would have been terrible, but not unfun to watch, mm-hmm. right? Like it would have been fun to see like, yeah, Balon Greyjoy <laughs> sitting up there. What? <laughs> what about Peter Baelish? When do you, how do you think he would have fared um, as a ruler? Depending, it depends on who he has around him because, like, um, um, Varys hates him, right? And yes. Tyrion hates him. And those are two really useful people to have in your court, at least pretending like they're working to you. And Cersei hates him. And Catelyn hates him. Like, everyone who comes into contact with him kind of comes away with it's like when you pet a dog that hasn't mm-hmm. had a bath and your hand is kind of slimy. Like, that is what interacting <laughs> with Peter Baelish is like. And then he's going to try and sleep with your daughter. <laughs> like, it's just like he's not a cute look. He is a very interesting character. I think he would have been assassinated yeah. on the throne. He did not inspire inspire loyalty from no. anyone because except Sansa, who like just needed to be rescued in that moment. Yes, and eventually conspired with Arya to, <laughs> to kill him. Uh, yeah, he was. I think that was the one thing is like he was very smart. He had a lot of resources. Look, he came from a very you know middling family, but in the in the tradition of a lot of the Game of Thrones characters. Yeah. But because he did whatever it took. It, he had no friends. But right? I don't. I don't even know if it's because he did whatever he took. But he did whatever he took, or he, whatever it takes. Yep. Yeah. Past tense. Um, shamelessly. Yeah. And like he never tried to hide it. He wasn't very sneaky. Like he did what he did, and he told you why he did it. Like when he rescues Sansa, like he just tells her straight up that like I lied because I wanted to come get you. The end. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, you have to be a little more subtle than that because, you know, we talked about admiring that quality in Marjorie. We've talked about admiring that quality in Tyrion. Mm-hmm. And it's because they know enough to shut their mouths when the moment comes. But Peter Baelish, like, wants you to know how clever he is. Mm-hmm. And that's a deeply annoying quality. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Not, and, you know, there's several times. I remember when he hints, like, this is something comes out of ego when he hints to Cersei that he knows about her and Jamie and she, mm-hmm. at that point she's like threatens to kill him like like why would you do that you know what I mean like but that's pure ego right yeah. that's like he wants you to know yeah exactly versus like just shut up keep that on your back pocket or whatever um, he does look like a hot English teacher though and I'm into that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, I knew him from The Wire. I know. That's so funny. Cause, oh, so I've never seen The Wire, okay. but uh, everyone oh. always says that they know him from that and that it's a very different character oh, yes. from who Littlefinger is. Yes, definitely different character. And a different accent, I would imagine. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, you definitely should watch The Wire because The Wire, Game of Thrones has a lot of, even though it's you know totally unrelated genre, mm-hmm. in terms of when you talk about uh, deep, rich characters... Uh, characters that come and go. I mean, not quite. There aren't, you know, as many deaths in yeah. there, but there are significant deaths, and there's it, same network, right? Same, yeah, HBO. So it makes sense. Yeah. Sort of the spiritual predecessor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just in, it's all a lot of the politics and whatnot, and good people you think are, are bad, and bad people, are, you know, it's definitely, definitely something you should definitely. Check out. Look uh, for our The Wire yeah, podcast yeah, coming exactly. soon to Collider. <laughs> we could, definitely could do that based, you know, and they, they, they have enough material uh, there. So um, let's see here. Ramsey Bolton, terrible. 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 Great actor. Terrible. Yes. That kid from Misfits, love him. <laughs> um, yeah, and we mentioned Ver- Viserys, like, what a whine! Like rewatching season, I'm like, I forgot how whiny he was. He's so. I mean, he's a coward too. At least so Ramsey. Awful. Ramsey is not a coward. No, he's not. To a, again, to a fault. He's a psychopath. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. A, you know, he's a terrible, terrible person. But he owns but he, up to what he does. He stands behind what he does, and he leads from the front. Yeah. Viserys is just like a wimp yeah. at every turn. There's nothing admirable about him. We're all gratified when he died, and that horrible wig went away. <laughs> The wig was so bad, and Danny's wig was so good. You could tell who was going to survive. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it was fun watching his face get Crowning. melted. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, he would have been terrible. He he was basically like a, a grown up Joffrey. Absolutely, yes, yeah. absolutely. That's a great comparison. Yeah, like an entitled, mm-hmm. no. I, I can't think of any admirable qualities to him. No. Which is so sad. No charisma, no, like, 
Just there's just no, nothing. No leadership. Not well spoken. Not a mili- not, not a mili- not a military mind. No friends. Yeah. Wow. How pathetic. Yes. <laughs> um, so much for a king of dragons. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Balon Greyjoy. Uh, how is Balon in the book? Because you don't get too much of him. You obviously he sees no. relationship with him and Theon. He's a character who's much more referenced than you see, but he's about the same as in the show. He's mm-hmm. very distant, very mean, very hard. Um, which is one of the reasons that I kind of I like Theon. Like you can understand why Theon came to care for the Starks, but and also how he betrayed them because Theon. Uh, everything Theon does is in service of I. I want my father to love me. Yes. Um. Because he sent me away. Yeah. Like obviously to such a huge fault. Um. That he winds up betraying his actual father figure and his like actual siblings. Yeah. Uh, which is why I think he's so tragic. Um. But yeah, Balon is basically the same in the books. You hear a little bit more about um his myth and like how he's been stirring up trouble for so long and like why the Starks had to kind of go and quash him during Robert's Rebellion and why they wound up taking Theon and stuff like that, but he's not like a nuanced character necessarily. Yeah. Um, uh, so of the rulers that we've had, it, it, we've had, uh, I mean, of the ones they've shown on, on mm-hmm. the show, obviously you have uh, Aerys Targaryen, the Mad King, but mm-hmm. he's only through fa- flashbacks. You have Robert, and then you have Joffrey, and then you have uh, Tommen, and then Cersei. Oh, yeah, Tommen. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of sad that that out of all those, Robert is the high mark in there. But Robert at his best uh-huh. is a great king, mm-hmm. you know. And then Robert at his worst, again, is like, I don't know, 7 out of 10, like, fine. <laughs> um, but you're right, because Robert is a deeply flawed character in that classic literary sense. Like, mm-hmm. he, he rose really high, he fell really mm-hmm. far. Yeah, it is a little sad, right, that he's the best. The best of the ones that we've seen. I mean, Tom, I hated Tommen. I mean... Not because he was a bad person, but it was so... Look, Cersei is obviously not a hero in this storyline, yeah. but you, there is... And this is actually why I like her so much as a villain, mm-hmm. is there's so much things that you can empathize with her yes. and what she's gone yes. through. Mm-hmm. And also just you can see her motivations for a lot of different things, you know? Uh, even when you know she's wrong, you, you see where that motivation is coming from. And to have her... Being held captive, yeah, and him to do absolutely nothing. nothing was like I was like, oh my god! It's I mean, it's also it's also tough to judge him though because he is an actual child and he looks yes. like a child. You know, like that's a very young actor yeah. who they cast and like his scenes with Marjorie are like deeply unsettling. Um, that was a death that I was surprised by when that oh, happened. Yes. And I because that know. happens uh, not in the book yet. No. We're definitely not that far. Um, but, I mean, I don't know if Tom and even, like, stuck around really long enough where if you're sort of looking at it from a history book perspective, mm-hmm. like, if we don't know what's happening behind the scenes, like, if anyone is even going to, like, he's a drop in the bucket. Oh, yeah. Even more than Joffrey. At least oh, Joffrey, yeah. like, messed some stuff up. <laughs> yeah, and he was around longer and yeah. did some stuff. Like, Tom and was like. Tom and is the Rickon of the Lannister yes, exactly. family. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And then he kills himself. Bites it, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, and then Joffrey's, you know, terrible worst but you know that's what you need in the in these shows right yes uh we can't like them all because no. then it makes it too easy and even the characters that we do like do deeply flawed things like Daenerys like John, like okay. Tyrion you know they're all real people which means they're all complicated which is great for television and then difficult when you think about who would I really want to be in charge yes yes because there's it's it's the whole like well that guy seems cool. Like, Robert seems like if he was your friend, it would be a blast to hang totally. out with. Totally. You would love Robert, yeah. but you wouldn't want to live with him. No, no. <laughs> and you probably wouldn't want to work with him either. Mm-mm. You just want to be like, hey, he's the buddy you see, like, once a year and have some drinks with. And go, right? Yeah, and go to someone's wedding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And have fun. Where, Yeah. And then there's some of these people that you just never want to see ever. Like Annie Bolton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ever in your, in your life. So... Um, I think that that's it with that topic. Uh, is there anything else you you want to discuss somewhat in the realm of sitting on top of the Iron Throne? Because we had so many different topics that we'll totally. be talking about. Um, I want to ask you, because we sort of talked about like who from a story standpoint we think would be good, who from our personal standpoints we think would be good. Um, if, if you're in charge of the show, mm-hmm. who would you put on the throne at the end? Okay. Like, do you have a specific point of view on what that should be? 
what would be the most shocking maybe because we have to bear in mind as much as we're serving the story like we're serving the ratings and we're yeah. serving the five spinoffs that are going to come out of this yeah. as well yeah which is the the spinoff that has been greenlit, uh, which they're calling the Long Night. Uh, what it takes place like right after the Age of Heroes. Yes. I think? Yeah. 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 Um, who would? I mean, the most. You're a producer, shocking, Dennis. Come on. <laughs> I know it's just shock. The thing is, I don't like to do stuff just for shock value. I always like to go. What is the most organic? Yeah. Yeah. Way and to me that, like I said, like a Jon Snow or Daenerys, if I wanted to shock people, you either like leave Cersei there yeah, yeah, yeah. or you bring in, you know, I don't know. I think if they put Sansa, I think people would be mad. To be honest, like if they put Sansa on the Iron Throne. I just think it would it would say so much if they gave it to a, any woman, but if they left it with a woman. Yeah, for like but I mean, age. that could be Daenerys, because Daenerys is more set absolutely, up for absolutely, that. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Sansa, while she has a great character arc, mm-hmm. you know, because really, she's really annoying in the in the first she's few awful. seasons. She's yeah. awful. I didn't like her at all. But that's, <laughs> the thing is, is, but they had a plan yeah. for her. So when you see her come around, you're like, oh, she's, she's so much better now. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it was thought out beforehand. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I personally want Tyrion on the throne. Okay. That's, that's okay. who cool. I cool, want cool. on yeah, 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 totally. the throne. Uh, Which would, I think, even though I said that that's who I think it should be, it would be a shocking choice. Yes, it would be. Just because they've kind of also shifted from because originally his character had the most screen time mm-hmm. of all the characters throughout the season. He's won, I think, the most awards as well. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jon Snow mm-hmm. got started to shift, I think, season around season six, maybe? Five yes, or six. Right about the right before he became the leader of the Night's Watch. Yeah, something like that. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd want Tyrion, but but I don't think that's going to happen. If I were trying to be truly shocking, um, there is a prophecy that we get in the first book mm-hmm. and in the first series about Daenerys, right? Like uh-huh. you'll be betrayed for love. You'll be betrayed for money. You will never uh, birth a live child, which mm-hmm. leads into right the Misa storyline okay. where they're all her children. Um, so that's why you're saying her and John will never have a oh, child. Oh, I think they'll have a child. Okay. I think she'll die. And I and if I were trying to shock and confuse, mm-hmm. um, the final shot would be that baby, someone putting it on the Iron Throne. So mm-hmm. like fire and ice have come together together at last, fulfilling the song that we've heralded this series mm-hmm. with the whole time. Um, but I don't know if people would be real mad that they're like, we don't even know who this person is. <laughs> this is not a character. This is a baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it might be a situation where like someone like Tyrion is, is the temporary protector of the realm like Ned was yeah, like supposed a regent, to be. Yeah, like and like Cersei was supposed yes. to be. Yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she never... Uh, she protected her interests. Yes. <laughs> and her children. Yeah, and I guess Jamie to a lesser extent. Yeah, well, until later on. Until he got unsexy. Yeah. <laughs> he got lice. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I just... It's, it, it's one of those things where this show has so many possibilities and... Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see what uh, all the listeners are going to think, and I can't wait to read everybody's theories. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, we have this in, in, on podcast, which uh, is on our Collider TV Talk feed. I think we'll probably put the first episode, this episode, up on the Collider Factory feed as well. Oh, so exciting. So, so people can... Uh, so if you are listening to this on the Collider Factory feed, uh, subscribe to the TV Talk feed so you'll find this here every week. Um, and then... Uh, we're, I think we're going to put this the video on the main channel as well. So subscribe to the youtube.com slash Collider videos, or maybe we have it on the Collider podcast feed. We'll, 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 we'll figure it out. It's going to be everywhere. Uh, yes. Uh, so post your comments there and let us know what you think about the show and what we should talk about. I mean, we, you and me have already like bantied about a bunch of different oh, yeah. topics, but... We'd love to hear from you guys as well. Uh, Ashley, where can people find you? You can find me all over the internet at Ashley V. Robinson. The V is very important because I don't want to fight a WNBA player for (laughs) SEO. Thank you. Please donate to my Kickstarter. All the links are in my profiles. And you guys can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero or on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. And like I said, let us know what you think. See you guys next time.